people that traveled to help us or making decisions for the city of St. John. We'd ask that you allow rain to come to this earth and we just pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, is there any additions to the agenda? to like to move the police department up under citizen comments. My name is Joe Palacios. I've been in the government for 43 years. Uh, I was 17 years as a city manager. I retired in 2005 from the city of Hutchinson. And prior to that, I had various uh, experience in the city. I actually started working in the city at the landfill, believe it or not. And they had a school program where I received my bachelor's and master's program in political science. Since I retired, I've been a consultant, a manager, professor at Wichita State, and I've done some work for the state and federal government. And I've done uh, retreats and councils and summers and work on special issues uh, in various cities uh, from the size of St. John to the size of Sedgwick County. Uh, I, want, I want to preface my remarks before going to report. One thing I always do is I always go to the community and I drive around. Usually what I do, I didn't do it this time, but usually I talk to a funeral director. Uh, I'll talk to a barber, which I, I knew the barber, so I didn't have to talk to him because his daughter and my daughter went to school together at Wichita. And usually between those two, you can tell a lot about what's going on in the city because they know everything and uh, 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 about the community. But I would tell you in, in, my, re in my windshield survey of the community, I, want, I wanted to be able to tell you this. And if it wasn't true, I would tell you the true story too. But the true story is that I want to congratulate the council of St. John's, the previous councils, because you can walk and drive down the streets and you look at your streets, your streets are in pretty good condition. They're well maintained. You have curbs. I'm biased towards curbs because curbs to me keeps the cars from driving up on the, on the lawns and those kinds of things and just makes the, the community trashy. And, and the third thing, your infrastructure is in place very well. And I'm talking about your water uh, systems and stuff like that. And the third thing that that's, that's really tells the difference is the housing stock. Your housing stock, you do have some problems, but generally it's pretty clean. 
you know, you, you could have side views. And when I say side views, you go to a corner and you look down the street and you can see the other end. And there's not much junk around. I mean, there's a few spots, but not bad. Now, I'm, what I'm telling you now, from here on out, I want to compare you with Stafford. Because I worked in Stafford. And Stafford, I didn't tell them that good news. I told them bad news. Their streets are in terrible shape, to be honest with you. The housing structure, I'm, I don't need to go into that, it's bad. And it, it just seems that this community's got their act together. And the problem with that is that you may take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. It takes someone from the outside to come in to tell you that. In Hutchison, we're having a housing problem. If you go there, we know that our housing stock looks for you. If we had our town looking like your town, we'd be okay. So what I'm telling you is that evidently you as a council and your previous councils, the predecessors, have set some policies which you determine the policies and you allow your department heads to implement that. And I'm talking about basically about mail and, and, and your city clerk. And they have done a tremendous job. And a lot of times you take that for granted. I'm just telling you the continuity of those two, uh, they're accountable. Those people are accountable. I think they're ethical, and they tell you what they need, and you, you approve what's going on. You just need to keep that going. Now, the other assessment, I want to say this, I think you have one worry that I would worry about. And, and I'm not getting paid for this, but I'm telling you, so you don't worry about it. But, but the one worry I would worry about is that if it's next door. If Dylan's ever pulls out, I think you'd be in trouble. So don't take that for granted. So you want to do is make sure you have a grocery store. Because if you don't have a grocery store, uh, I don't think I saw anything else other than the, I call it the quick shop on, on many stores. Uh, let me give you an example about a community that suffered with the grocery store. <coughs> I worked with the, uh, the Greensburg tornado for the first hundred days. I was sent there by the state to represent this, help the city county get back. And we were basically told, when the grocery store got wiped out, we were basically were told that we couldn't get another grocery store in town. And after a bunch of discussions came by, Dylan's decided to make that quick shop, like a, uh, a prototype first time of kind of like a market with little food and sales and this stuff down. And that makes a difference with what the community has a grocery store. But anyway, I just want to let you know about that. Whatever you're doing, keep it up going. And uh, you've got two good public officials there in the mail and the city clerk. And, and uh, you don't have to agree with them on everything, but you can tell you that they've, they've got their head on straight. I'm just telling you that, okay? Now, let me get to the task at hand, what I'm here for. I was asked to assess, specifically in the police department, whether you should go to the 3-4 or which is the best, and come up with recommendations. When I came here, I interviewed the city clerk. I talked to all the commissioners, either by phone or in person. And so some of you I met personally already, and others I just talked to you on the phone. I talked to the three police officers employees and took their input. And what I've come up is the following. But let me say this. The issue of manpower is your decision to make. That's nobody else's decision. You make that decision. And whatever decision you make, the majority, you support it. And once you discuss it and have your input, it's all right to have input. But once you come to a conclusion at the end and there's a, a majority vote, then you support it. As you know, Congress, at the federal level, they don't get their act together. For some reason or another, they take things too, you know, don't get nothing done. And when you don't get nothing done, you don't move forward in the community. Okay, let's go to the uh, page two of my report. I assume you have a copy of that, which is the second page. Sorry, sir. And uh, let me tell you, I'll go, let's go to the facts on the second page. There are 160 hours in a week. And I write that at, at uh, 24 times 7. Okay, and the, uh, the reason I'm telling you that, I'll, I'll come back to it later. A lot of people, they, they don't understand that, but, but simple math will tell you, if you have three people working 40 hours, that's 120 hours. If you have four people, that's 160 hours. And it, that means you're always eight hours short, but I'll come back to that later. But during it, uh, in law enforcement work, and Chief, you correct me if I state things, anything wrong, but they are required to have training of you know, 40 hours a week. To maintain their certificate. 40 hours a year. I mean, 40 hours a, a year. I'm sorry, 40 hours a year. So you take three people or four people times that's 120, 160. There's 
three weeks already that they're gone automatically just to maintain their police certificate. Okay? Then you got sick leave, you got vacation, you got holidays, and you got other illnesses. You don't know what else would happen, uh, injury leave and stuff like that. But the manpower you have, you're always going to be short because of those things. Okay. So what I'm come to the conclusion is this. That you're better off to have a four-man person than a three-man, uh, I shouldn't say four-man, a four-person personnel, excuse me, <laughs> versus the three personnel because it provides you more flex flexibility. And the reason why it provides flexibility is that uh, when you have the 168 hours that I talked about, you would have, at 75%, is 126 hours, so four people, if four people work 40 hours, uh, I mean, three people work uh, 40 hour shifts, that's 120. That means with three people, you could get about 75% coverage of the, of the city. So some of you might say, well, maybe we can get by with three people. But you got to remember all these reasons I mentioned about sick leave and vacation and certification pay and holiday pay and injury leave and all that. You take that off and, you're, and the amount of downtime you have is tremendous. Okay? So, what I'm recommending to you is that you go to a four-person personnel. Now, I know that the chief works 40 hours now. I didn't count that, but he's got a lot of administrative work and a lot of other paper legal work that he has to keep up to keep the certification page and update policies and those kinds of things and handle various other complaints and, and those issues. So even if you threw him in the mix at 40 hours, you're still going to be a little bit short. But the 40-hour four-person gives you more flexibility, and the reason why I say this is more, more important, and I can't describe this any better, and the only one that can describe it better is, the, is your police department employees. If you had only three, and remember all the downtime I talked about that you had, and then one is down, then you're down to two. That's where the stress comes in. You follow me? And that's, that's where you do not need people who are who are under stress, under utilize, uh, overutilized, then they'll start making bad decisions, and then you're going to come to a point where a decision needs to be made that requires thinking, and I'm telling you, the community will pay for that. You'll be better than off having four versus three because of the flexibility you have with the three hours game. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, you, you may not agree with me on this, but I think there is room for you to set up a volunteer program that's going to take time. I'm talking about a volunteer program that can help the police department do things that you have to be careful in this because you can get sued over medical reasons and unlawful arrest and those kinds. They do what I call non-police work. All they do are the eyes and ears and they patrol in the cars. You see what I'm saying? So they'll be in a car. Because what people like to see is they see a car, that's good. But that officer doesn't have to, that person in that car does not have to take action. If he, needs, he or she needs to take action, whoever the volunteer is, then they call the chief or whoever is on the uh, to come to duty, they take the action. All there are, are are the eyes and ears to go around. And a lot of people in the community say, they feel more comfortable and they feel safe when they see a police car. Now, there was one community, I'll tell you where it was, it's a much bigger community than, than here, was Derby. And in Derby one time, they didn't have a full 40-hour personnel working schedule for that size of town. They hired me about, ten, uh, about uh, nine years ago, right after I retired. And you know what they were doing? They were putting a mannequin in the police department on Rock Road, <laughs> parking it there, because people would see that police officer, but it was actually was a mannequin. But it, it slowed the people down, down on Rock Road coming into town. Just, you know, so, I mean, the, the perception of having to see a police vehicle is the type of thing that you want. Now, the volunteer program is basically to show presence. And you can use them uh, at various events. You can have men and women. It's nice to have women volunteers because there are certain times of events it's more appropriate to have a, a female uh, volunteer that goes with it. They act, uh, what they do, they're, they're just volunteers that just patrol and see things that's going on, going on. 
And, and you have to be very, uh, they have to have strict policies to follow through and go with it, and yet especially screen them. Uh, screen them. Now, other communities use fire, firemen as volunteers. They're one resource. And also school teachers like to be volunteers. Because a lot of times when uh, school teachers or school personnel goes and they go to another community, if they can say they have experience in some other communities, the volunteers are paid for that. As you know, school teachers don't get paid that much, and so they like to use that second income as uh, going with it. The other thing that you can use volunteers for, and you don't have it, but I assume that the school has a, still have a student driver program. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Driver's Ed. Driver's Ed, mm -hmm. yeah. And you can use that as a helpful. And, and the reason why that's helpful is because it's very important that the police officer be able to communicate with the students and feel like they're a friend to the students. One of the best things is to do is you can have a good relationship between the police department and the schools. And the way you can do that is through this volunteer program that you can have that. Okay. The, the third thing I wanted to mention is your comp time practice. You do not allow on a continued basis. That is a good practice. Keep it up and don't, don't, uh, don't change it. That's the best thing that, that you can have. Stafford got in trouble. Your city attorney will tell you that. They got in trouble in regard to that. Other committees do that. And uh, continue with your practice of not allowing comp time to be accumulated over an extended period of time. Uh, four, continue the practice of paying your clothing allowance. Most departments do that. I'm going to say 80% of the departments across the state do that. And that's just uh, good. And usually you require that if they don't stay here a year, then they have to reimburse, you, reimburse the city for such expenses. Uh, number five. Weaponry. The police department, now I need to change it because uh, I had a visit with the police chief on the phone and I, I used the wrong wording here. Uh, you do standardize your weapons. I was talking about your rifle programs, what I meant. And, and it's important that you standardize weapons. And the reason why you go to standardization of, the, your, of your weaponry, both pistol and rifle, is that you have, they're used to the same uh, gun or rifle. And also you can uh, uh, know where you can buy purchases and those kinds of things. A lot of times you can piggyback, like from Great Ben, if he knows anybody in Great Ben. I know the chief in Great Ben. And uh, maybe you can piggyback off Great Ben because they can buy bigger corners and you can get them at a, a reduced fight. You know, they call it a piggyback program. That you can do that. Uh, body armor vests, they should be purchased by the city. Uh, and I also would recommend that... Uh, to be mandatory to wear. If you're going to buy them, they should be required to, to wear them. You never know when you're going to use a need a vest. In the uh, in the 37 years I was there with the city, actually it was, it was let's see, 1982. No, that's actually 38 years. Uh, there was one officer killed. He was not wearing a vest. Another officer was wearing a vest and it stopped it. And really, what it went through the vest and it hit the comb. He had, he had hair. <laughs> he combed his hair and he hit the comb. And, and the actual comb actually kept it from you know, causing serious damage. Then the third officer got, got a hit. Uh, I wasn't city manager at the time, but it was the last day I was city manager. And actually, it, it happened at 1 o'clock and I left at noon. But at about 1 o'clock, an officer got shot. And, so that was on the other guy's watch, not mine. But uh, and he uh, uh, they missed the vest and hit underneath and got him. But I would recommend that you use, that uh, if you buy the armor vest, you should require the mandatory use. The work schedule. The chief, the police chief, in this, you can do work schedules that fits the for the community. Not every work schedule is the same from every community, but by by being creative. And, and with the four people, having four people instead of three, he's allowed to be more creative to develop a better work schedule that meets the flexibility of all the employees. And uh, that's another byproduct of four versus three, is that it gives him more flexibility in the work schedule. And he will tell you that that, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, he also has to be mindful he must be in compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act, as most of you uh, would know. Now, let me get to the issue that probably some people in the department would, would not agree with me. And you're all aware of the 
cost of the, uh, you see, you guys call it, um, let me see, I lost my train of thought here. On call. On call, that's it, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. You understand what your on call practice, all, all council members? Okay. Yeah, they actually have 12 hour shifts, uh, uh, the 12 hour shifts, four of them are on call, it means they go home and it goes away, there's no, no one on duty. In reality, you shouldn't be doing that. Somehow or another, the past council made the decision to do that. They were trying to be nice. And what happened now is the officers, when they get hired, or now the ones that are on, they view that as part of their pay. And you shouldn't have to have been paying that in the first place. But you, that's bygone. You don't worry about the past. Uh, that's one thing councils, good councils do is you forget about the past, you deal with the future. So we can't change what happened in the past. I suggested some ways how to handle that. But you only would eliminate that if you go to a four-person department. If, if you stick to, decide to stay with a three-person personnel department, then I suggest you do the on-call pay. But uh, now, the question is, do you take it away, or you do it gradually, or whatever? My suggestion to you is this, is that you do this psychological exam that, was, that I saw, which is the next part of it. And by the way, I, I want to tell you, let me go to that and I'll come back to this mission. In my conversations with, with the police chief, and in my interviews with you that I met personally, and the ones that I talked to you on the phone, you both agree on one thing. The governing body, every one of you, led me to believe that there was a communication problem with the police chief. And guess what? The police chief tells me he has a communication problem. So at least you're on the same page. That's nothing new. Now, what, what has made that a little bit more apparent, what I picked up, being an outsider, is that when you went through the last police, this last police selection process, I don't think you went through a, a full-blown procedure of interviews. After what you had experienced with the previous chief and those kind of things, you might have got fed up and got tired with it, and you just you had a petition, and you appointed the current chief to be chief, and that's not the way to do things. Because it's not fair to him, and it's not fair to you. Because people outside in the community are going to say, well, he was given the job. He didn't earn it. And some of you are going to feel like you were pressured for the same reasons. And so that puts him in a bad predicament. Now, I'm here to tell you that if he, I, based on my experiences that I've talked to with him, and based on my discussions with a police psychologist, I think the police chief can overcome those perceptions. He's got some weaknesses. We all got weaknesses. But at the same time, he's got strengths. And I think that you guys, if you haven't agreed to get a psychological testing done, as the one I suggested, and your city attorney has the name of that person and the phone number, that uh, I think we can improve on that and it make your chief better. It will strengthen his, his, his strengths and lessen his weaknesses where you have no problem. One of the disadvantages, because of the way you guys went about it, is that I think... You're trying to compare him to Sonny. And Sonny was a nice guy. Common sense. Then you brought somebody else in and it didn't work out. And you consider somebody else and it didn't work out or whatever it was. And then you're comparing Sonny to, to this guy. That's not right. He, he's his own man. But in order to make sure you get everything correct, you go through this testing that's done that's non-biased. And then he would measure up to that, and you judge him based on the results from that, on your on the, on his uh, uh, evaluation, and and based on the score that you get from that, he would do that. Now he indicated to me, and I'll let him speak for himself, that he's willing to do that. If he wasn't willing to do that, I would be asking for an executive session to you and tell you that you need to hire another police chief. But one of the things he he wanted to do is the communication. It's rather unique that you talk about communications as a group, and he talks about communication. That's good. 
Because we know what the issue is and we know what the issue is with it. So I think that he, he can own up to that and he will do it. And it's just, uh, I'm just laying the cards on the table and I think he's doing, you're doing well in regard to that issue. Now, I'll be asking any more questions on that later on. The other thing I wanted to mention that I thought that the council, uh, this is outside my scope because it affects, I think, the, the work that I was doing, is your evaluations, as I understand it, Joe, you correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> but uh, the mayor does the evaluation of the city clerk and, and Mel. Is that correct? And the chief. And the chief. And then uh, they discuss it, and that's it. And what I suggested that once the, she does the evaluation, that she has an executive session with the council and explain to her that evaluation. So you all know what that evaluation was. Okay? And if you have any concerns, you could express that to her before the evaluation, have a meeting with me, or that way you're all in sync and know what's going on, what was said. Okay? And it's just, it's just better for everybody. And also, the chief, or the department head, or Mel, or, or the city clerk, John, they know where they stand. I'm sure, like, where you work, if you're not the boss, you like to know where you stand with your boss. And, and, uh, objectively. So, that's something else that I found out that's outside my scope, but it's a, related to this. Uh, that would, might change a requirement <coughs> to a personnel manual. I don't know. It might require council action, but I don't know what goes with it. Um, let me say another item, then I'll come back to this, this one about the manpower. The third thing that I notice is that once you do evaluations, uh, you give raises, and the raises are, are either flat dollar amount or percentage and are different from others. Is that correct? What's that again, Joe? The raises are either, it's a percentage amount, it's not the same, percent, but there may be either a flat rate or a percentage that's different from person to person. Correct. Okay. It depends on their okay. evaluation, evaluation. Okay. And, okay. and the super right. in, in What I'm department. suggesting that you change that because once you do that, tendency in small cities is that you'll give the police officer and the sergeant, is that right? Is that the sergeant? Yes. Yeah, but you were sergeant before. Mm -hmm. There's a tendency to give them more percentage, and the, report, and the police chief, or Mel, or Jana, you'll give them less of a percent because you think they're making too much money either. <coughs> and what's going to happen is that you're closing the gap between the sergeant and the police chief, and the account clerk and Jana, that one of these times ain't going to be worth it except the pay raise because the pay is not that much difference. And it should be at least anywhere between 10 and 50 percent difference in pay. That's just another thing. That brings problems because it uh, may be an issue coming up when you do those things. So, so it should be as a, an what, even percent. An even percent, and and I would go to step raises and goes with it. Now, I I will tell you this: step raises. Now, I don't think Mel would do this, and I don't think uh, uh, John would do that. And I don't know the chief because I present Chief Young, okay? <laughs> but Mel and Bill, I know them well enough because I've worked with them before that if an employee's not performing, I think they would tell them and they wouldn't give them a raise. Most department heads just to be raised to avoid the problem of telling you. You know what I mean? In, you know, in other words, when you get in a larger city, it's easier for a supervisor to just give a person a raise and say, no, you're going to be raised because of this, this, and this. That's the tendency. I'm not going to lie to you. You need to hold the department heads accountable to give honest raise because if they don't run their employees right, then you, you'll know about it because people will know there's no equity in, in those decision-making processes regarding giving raises. So that's one thing you have to worry about. I, I believe that you've got good, strong department heads that, that if a person doesn't deserve a raise, they would tell them that. And not only tell them that you won't get a raise because it's this, this, and this. And if you prove this and this, you can get it with it. You see what I'm getting at? Okay, let's go back to the to the three verses four, and, and I just want to make one other comment on that. 
So I recommend that the chief get evaluated. I would also recommend that once you get that, and if you like that process, that you evaluate the other two officers doing the same thing, so you got all of them treated equally. Then after that, whatever decision you make, you implement. If you want to go to four person, then you do it at that point in time, once that this is all done. And after you do the, make the decision, if you decide to go to four, then you have to deal with that call out pay situation. Now, if you want to get add the pay into their pay scale, you have to give something to the police chief because otherwise you're closing the gap. I looked at that gap and that gap's getting closer. And that call out pay, putting in the salary of the, of the other employees will close that gap with, with the chief. So you have to keep that you know, in, in mind. Is there a cost for the psychological testing? Yes. Uh, did you give uh, that? I didn't print it out. It's about three. I think it was about three hundred fifty bucks. I think I looked yes, at it. Yes, it's about. It's and so what I, what I recommend it is that. See, if I if I understand correctly, you, your budget is already four person now. You just haven't filled it. So the money is budgeted, but you haven't spent it. So in order to help the budget, I recommend that you don't fill it until you get this testing done, and then you make that decision. And then the time you have this testing done and everything. I'd say it's going to be in the summer. Then when you do your revised budget July for this year and next year, then you can do your calculation. I think you'll still be in the budget. With it. How many psych evaluations we have to have? Because I've already had one. Well, uh, their psych evaluations are done for different reasons. And I don't know who, who you are, but but uh, the police the police department is a separate psych that from, from being interviewed on a uh, on a. Uh, for the interview process. Yeah, I'm okay. the sergeant. Okay. So, so I got one when I was hired. But how long ago was that? Well, almost seven years ago now. Okay. See, that's you're due one. Okay. You, you, you uh, see, uh, I don't know the process, but let me tell you what I require. The, the Hutchinson Police Department. You got evaluated in the beginning. You know, you do your psych test. Mm -hmm. You go through your training at Yoder, and you come back, and then when you get promoted, you get another testing done because when people act differently, when they get promoted, there's different responsibilities, and so you come in a different evaluation process. So I imagine if you're here and the way things are, you might have one more, and that's about it based on the department strength that you have now. Well, I don't mind having one. I just, they take us out for eight hours. I mean, that's an eight hour. It's an eight-hour exam. That's eight hours that an officer ain't on shift. The way I look at it is uh, the city puts a lot of money into a police officer. Uh, the training that you go through at, at Yoder and all the other training that they span in. And then uh, if for some reason or another there's something down, they need to find it and give you a chance to correct it. If they don't, then it gets pretty expensive if you make a bad move. And then goes with it. Yeah, I, I've said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, as, as far as that goes, there, the current policy we have now only states that the officer gets a psychological evaluation upon hire. Mm -hmm. So is that something that you would suggest that we need to change the policy on and say? No, I would leave that there, and and because of the, uh, uh, I think what you want to do is make sure because of this communication issue with the, with with the police chief, which is you. It makes to put everybody in the same boat so there's everybody's treated the same way and they understand again by, by the same psychologist and everything. I guess my thing is, is I don't, as, as the chief, I, I don't see a reason. I, I don't see anything, and of course I'm not a psychologist, but I, I don't see any anything in them that says they, Charlie, he'll be, have been, been here just three years in March. Um, he just, so he, he's had one within the last three years. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm just trying to figure out the. The only thing I would, the, the only reason I would recommend, and you, really, you don't have to, but I think it's best for you, because how, what are you going to evaluate them on? If the council is going to evaluate what the psychologist told you, then you know, are you going to invite you, have your people in a different set of standards, or what? And, and evaluate them for what, Joe? It, well, evaluation on on your job on based on your job description from the psychologist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he would tell he the psychologist would tell you uh, anything that they have that they, they would notice in your in your thinking. Yeah, but they're not going to know anything about our job performance. 
They'll go through your, your evaluation. These people are on courts, they can be, they're tested and everything, they're certified and, and well you know what I'm talking about. You, all those police colleges, uh, they're, they're all certified in the court system. This guy is also certified for the court system. But you don't have to. I'm just yeah. saying, uh, when I, you really, it's really for the protection of the police chief. Correct. And also too, it's only, and like Joe said, it's only, I mean, if we expect you to do it as the chief, Adam, then we would also, you personally, should also expect your officers to do it as well. Right. Well, so the, we're all on the same page. Right. What I'm saying is, is, is the reason um, that it was explained to me that, that the council or, or whoever would like me to have one is because of communication issues. And what I'm saying is I don't have any issues with these guys that, that makes me think that they need one, is what I'm saying. I think I think they're, myself, and they're kind of feeling like that if we take a psychological evaluation and there's some little glitch on there, then we might come back to work after that psychological evaluation and somebody's going to say, well, we're not happy with your psych evaluation. See ya. So... But then you know, then you would know what we, what weaknesses they have or what strengths they have. Right, that's and exactly that, right. That's it's something true. that they can. It, it's on. it it'd make your job easier. If you don't want it, it's fine. But it make your job more difficult, and you would be challenged more. I'll guarantee. No, like I said, I'm not arguing against it. I'm just no, trying no. I'm, I'm just you know the, the reasoning yeah. and, and the rationale behind it. I think it's for the protection for the employee, and and also for protection for the city at the same time. Is that interesting? Uh, and the, the other thing I will tell you this, uh, most, I don't know most consumers do, but I tell you this, a city manager, most city managers have three and four year contracts. I had 22 one year contracts, so that's the way I wanted it. Because I'll tell you what, I don't know if you relate to a school superintendent or somebody like that, but when you have a, a contract with two years and you have rollover, you know what I'm talking about, you get a year rollover, to me they get complacent. If I knew that I had to get evaluated every year and my job depended on what going on in the year, I had a six month severance. You know, I was born on my toes. If, if, uh, now my wife didn't like it, but I figured, you know, if, if I wasn't doing my job, they ought to tell me if I can start looking for something else and go with it. So it was just a way uh, to keep me on my toes and also uh, to keep up the snuff and also improve my communications and my understanding because I knew what the council wanted me to, to do. I can tell you that every time I got evaluated, I had to improve on something every time. There was always something. I guess it's like an accountant when you're doing your books, they always find something wrong with your books. You know. Any other questions? I don't know if the chief have any other questions that goes with it. But. Um. Now, now, now you're, you're recommending that we wait to hire another person until after the psychological evaluations are done. If yeah. And you're, but you're basing that on budget, right? That's correct. I think I would argue against that um, because of the fact that if, if they're only three hundred fifty dollars a piece, we're already just a week and a half from our second pay period in a year. Um, we've already got that covered. It's because we're we're already budgeted for the fourth officer. And we're not paying. It's already in the budget. Um, so I, you know, I guess that would be one the, thing. The, that I, the, yeah. I can't argue with that. The only thing that would, that you haven't covered is what's your decision on the call-out pay? Would you cut it off, by the way? Well, we have, there, there's a couple issues with that. Number one, I don't believe you should ever take pay from somebody unless, yes, unless there's poor performance. And number two, there was a decision made in an executive session several years ago regarding that. Um, I don't know if I can say what that decision was outside of executive session, um, but a decision has already had already been made on that. See, so. and he's right. Now here's the difference where I disagree with the chief. That is not pay, part of the base pay. That's extra pay. And see, remember I told you they tend to view that as part of the pay? And that's true. I don't blame that because... But you're, this, but, but you're asking an officer to, to be for responsible hours. for 20 hours a week and, and not get paid for it. I know, but now if you go to four hours, you don't have to be on call. But we do, because I, even well, if we have four officers... When you have okay. sick leave, vacation leave, training, all that, it's still impossible to but cover. What you need to do is listen to your chief, let him explain, and you heard my argument, and then you can make the decision how you do it. That's why I wanted to delay the hiring the fourth officer, because I think you will have a budget problem with this extra expense, unless you got more money than what I saw uh, goes with it. 
But he, he's right. You can do it that way. You can keep the uh, keep the pay. That pay runs about two thousand. Let's see. If, right remember that? I think I wrote it down there. Two thousand eighty dollars per person. Yeah, that's what we need. I'm so, sensing a lot of frustration coming from the three of you, <laughs> and I just want you to know that these are just suggestions. Oh yeah, we know. And, okay, well. This is just clarification. Also, which we got. Uh, they, I think they understood, uh, as you, on page uh, two, you notice that input from the public, staff, and others are welcome. Also, the supporting government express their own thoughts and values. Open discussion is good and that kind of thing. And you make a decision. Right, you and to, I just yeah. wanted you don't to have clarify to follow, that. Follow my, right. follow my, my record. They can, you can throw them in the wastebasket. So. Uh, the other thing that Chief and I talked about is that he mentioned, and he's right, maybe six months to nine months after the going on, he would like to have a mentor or somebody, to, someone to talk to, or did you say, what was our discussion about that? You said something about you, you asked me if I, if, about mentorships, yeah. and I expressed to you that I have a half a dozen or more Mentors already in place. Okay. I would suggest that you allow him to do that. I know you do it now, but make sure don't criticize him for him being gone because that's important. The police chief's job, just like Mel's job in the city, they're lonely positions. You know, uh, they have to protect the city, but at the same time protect the staff, and then and it's not popular in a small town because everybody knows each other and some people are related and. You make decisions against family, you know, blood's thicker than water. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, they get all in, and the more uh, informal relationships they have with mentors or people in their career, the better off it helps them because there's, they have the same problems in their community. And sometimes when another person or another chief, like people we talk to or a sheriff, uh, think of, say something, it makes them think of another idea they hadn't thought of. And at the end, you got a better result. So it's important that you allow them for that to happen. Can you have an executive? Do you have any questions of me? I don't, Joe. But you wanted an executive session? No, I don't need one unless you want an uh, executive session with me. I told you if 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 I thought that the chief wasn't salvageable or wasn't worth it, I would have to ask for an executive. I, I think the chief. He can do it. He was put in a, in a certain situation that was tough on him, and I think that this evaluation will help identify those issues and come together. And you got something formal that you can work to build stability to, to, to allow him to grow. Mm -hmm. I call for an executive session for 15 minutes with Joe, and Dawn, and Council, and myself, and Mayor. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All those in favor say aye. Um, Adam, do you have anything this evening? Um, yeah, I need to uh, purchase some business cards for Aaron and myself um, to change from promotions. That's okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. okay. Um, and then uh, several meetings back when we had talked about the holiday and vacation leave. I wanted to know what uh, for the carryover for the carryover payout or whatever how we were going to do that. They him, Adam and Aaron had uh, Charlie as well. Oh, oh, Charlie and Charlie too. as well yeah. Yeah. had carryover and we figured that we make a decision on that. So. I didn't check the numbers so I don't know where I saw the What, I mean, was, what was the, uh, I didn't. I didn't bring it down with me. I know at the end of the year um, we were each, give or take, around 15 days total. Okay. Um, I didn't bring those with me. I, yeah, I've, I've got it upstairs, but I forgot to. I honestly didn't even think about it, readdressing it until this evening. So. Do you guys want to know exactly the days and the hours and all that? We can move on yep. and we can come back to that, Adam. Okay. So you, if you would please get that information and then we'll come back to you. Will do. So, okay. All right. So it's okay that he orders the business cards.
Thank you. Yeah, you you get get oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, administration, Mel. Oh, wait a minute. I got a backpack. Excuse me. I don't have anything. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I should have asked you from the beginning. Sorry, that's terrible. Anybody have anything for Michael? Okay. Go ahead. When Nick was here the other day, mm -hmm. the marshal that was here when Nick was here, was it? Me? Yeah. Okay, I can't remember, but you're good with all that, right? Did we about? I don't think you were here either. I think Nick was just here by himself. You know? No, I was here. With fire, with here? The, talking about fire trucks one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. My bad. Sorry. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure that. Um, we're still discussing it, but. You're comfortable with it, and I didn't want you to. Feel I, yeah, I think. Uh, I think it'll be all right. Um, for as little as we would have to do it, it probably wouldn't ever be a big deal. Okay. That was kind of my thinking on it, too, yeah. but I don't, I'm not there, so I don't know. I mean, we do utilize their trucks quite a bit in town yeah. for various grass fires, so we kind of give and take deal. Okay. I just wanted to check. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Okay. Administration bill. Uh, you have your packet uh, ordinance T16, and uh, what this is about is special use for me. Uh, Marshall Sanders had applied uh, for special use uh, to open up a tire repair and do light uh, work in the public building. And the uh, planning commission had two meetings on this with Marshall and uh, went over this and. Uh, Marshall, you're all comfortable with everything that's on here? Everything that's on there, yes. So, uh, and what this is about, rather than rezoning a property, we've had concerns in the past, and when we redid the, the, uh, the zoning regulations, the special use gave us the authority to, with council's permission, to utilize a special use rather than a, a permanent zoning change. This is only good for Marshall. If he closes his business, Cells or whatever. This, you know, if someone else would have to do it, they would have to start over. This is only good with Marshall. So uh, he's he's agreed to everything, and if council is okay with everything, then uh, you know you can move to pass the ordinance. If you want to ask Marshall any questions, I'm sure he can fill in the blanks. If there's anything that you might have a concern about. The only, the only thing I had a concern about was uh, the hours of business. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I mean, I've talked to Marshall quite a bit about all this. No problem. And I know he's fine with the Sunday deal. But uh, to me, that's... We're, we're trying to... The zoning commission is trying to step in and limit somebody's income to me. What by he, doing that. But he agreed to it. They asked I understand him. that. I understand he agreed to that. Um, but we don't necessarily have to do everything the commission has come about. And, I mean, I don't understand why we want to limit somebody from doing business on a Sunday. You're telling me if a truck drives through the, through the deal, and I know he could probably do it and nobody would say anything, but all it does is opens up the opportunity if, for him to have problems just because somebody sees him working on a Sunday over there. Right? And that's what I don't like about right. it. But the, the thing about it, and the only reason it was addressed is so that there's guidelines to go by, and he's, I understand what you're saying, and that, that was discussed. That was, yeah. believe me, like I say, we had two meetings on this, these very uh, list of deals here to, to try and make everything, and you know, if he didn't like that, he had the opportunity to say so many times. And we, you just have to, the thing about a special use is that uh, you have to pretty much nail everything down, and it may seem kind of a, well, why do we even, Care, but it, you have to nail everything down so there's as well he's doing so much business over there now the neighbors complaining about all you know that's the thing about a special use It actually can be more restrictive in a lot of ways than anyone else in a regular uh, place that's zoned to do that but we're allowing him or if the council allows that to happen it's giving him an opportunity to do something that 
you know, might, might not be able to be done. So uh, I share your concern, and believe me, the, the Planning Commission did too. And if he wanted any difference, you know, he, you know, he had the opportunity to, to, to say that that wasn't going to work for him. So, and he can come back. I mean, you know, that's the other thing we stress: this is an ordinance. This is an ordinance. It can be changed, but hopefully it won't be. But if, if something comes up and he runs his business for six months or a year and says, man, I just, you know. But he told us that most of his weekend business, he's, he's going to be gone to, to with his service truck to do the tire work and everything. So in any other light duty work, you know, it's going to be inside the, the building. So, so I, Marshall, do you want to? But like in six months or so down the road, Mel, if he decides that these 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. just needs to be a little bit longer, he can come back to the zoning right, and talk. It, it, it can be done. It so was like discussed at zoning to go longer, and they did not like it to be any longer than 7 o'clock in the evening. Okay. It was just a concern, I mean... Because we had discussed, I mean, we discussed it both times we met. Later in the evening, one person brought it up, and, and the others didn't like it being later than 7 o'clock in the evening. I mean, I didn't have much choice, I mean, to agree with it. I'll just have to do anything outside of 7 o'clock out of a truck off the property. Right. Or in your shed. That means so you can do it inside the shed. Well, there was talking about any, uh, like, mechanic work or something, you know, at a point you might do it inside the building. Right. right. I was going to say, as long as he's inside the building, that's his property. I mean, well, I'm glad to see a business come to town, <clears throat> and I think it's great. We need a tire shop pretty bad, and I would don't want to hold this boy up any longer. He's already been held up. It's been 50 days, and I would make a motion to pass this thing with the changes of that 7 o'clock in the sun. Well, yeah, Get but rid it of won't, it. It won't pass. We can't pass it tonight. It goes back to the zoning board, Bobby. So we have to accept So you mean we can't override the zoning board? No, it has to go back to the zoning board. Well, I'll make a motion we adopt it. Second. Am I right, Mel? It goes back to the That's zoning board. And then he can come back mm -hmm. at any time. Yeah, but yeah, he shouldn't have to come back. But well, he, go, he can go ahead and get started this way. He's already costing 50 days, you know, and, and then he's going to have to come back at 50 days because he's going to work seven, before 7 o'clock or after 7 o'clock or on a Sunday in the middle of harvest. And somebody invariably is going to say something, he's going to be back up here fighting this deal again. The zoning board, anytime you go in business, you fight it from now on. Well, like I say, he, if we pass it now and he needs, we has trouble or something, maybe all of us can sit down at the table together and negotiate. Well, it's been motion in second. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Thank you, council. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you. Welcome. Marshall, good luck. Thank you. Don't be afraid to work after seven or <laughs> well, on Sunday because you're going to be doing it if you if you're going to make it. Okay. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Where are you going? Know your business. Yeah, what well, she said. Four one for me. <laughs> Not tonight. But all week maybe. Okay. Mark. 
Ann Williamson and Ronnie Christman and Bob Jim for counsel and Mary Julia Hines. Second. Third. All those favors say aye. Aye. All those favors say aye. Thanks, Council. 5346 KU. 